<laughs> I'm about that life. Eastern Alamance improves to 10 and 0 with the 42 to 14 victory. And Sharon, do you smell that? That's the playoffs right around the corner. I can't wait. Mission accomplished. Coach K gets win number 1K on the same court where he got win number 903. One of the key factors in that turnaround was their point guard, Cat Barber, who had taken his game to another level. We are knocking on the door of the 2015 National Championship here at Lucas Oil Stadium. So the Duke Blue Devils get more than one shining moment this year. Coach K gets his 1,000th win in New York City, and he also gets his fifth national championship, his third here in Indianapolis. Introducing this week's Scholar Athlete of the Week. There's two of them from Dudley High School, Michaela and Mariah Moyer. Not sure if the crowd here that is watching PJ and celebrating with him right now, he's actually being interviewed by NBA TV and I don't think they're aware that he's going to be traded to Charlotte, so he's going to be close to home, close to where he grew up. After ending their six-game losing streak, the Panthers are not filling themselves with their second victory in a row. Their 1-7 and seven mark within the ACC doesn't leave their fan base with many expectations as they head into year two of the Dave Clawson era. North Carolina comes to Winston-Salem, sporting a number 15 ranking, along with a three-game winning streak. It would be Tavares Best, who would be sacked in the backfield by Tim Mace and Alante Hall. Let's call that one a sack sandwich. Give me some mayonnaise with that one. In what was likely the most successful and talked about World Cup in history, it finally came to a conclusion with Sunday's championship match between Germany and Argentina. An estimated crowd of 34,000 people attended today's third round, and the majority of them were following the one and only Tiger Woods. Joey Chestnut, your eight-time hot dog eating champion. And Jason, I've got to ask you, how can you have a 4th of July without Nathan's hot dog eating contest? That's tradition right there, man. You got to throw that in one way or another. Next year, I'm calling it Joey Chestnut, nine-time hot dog eating champion. I'm calling it. <laughs> right on the cusp of the North Carolina-Virginia state border lies 1,300 acres known for its racing. <laughs> But Virginia International Raceway has much more to offer than the fast track. We have some fantastic racing, but we also have a, a corporate side and a group side of our track that people aren't that familiar with. You were fortunate enough to experience the, uh, the, the shooting today. Job. And yes, this is for anybody, even first time shooters such as myself. But safety always comes first. We're not a substitute for a firearm safety class or a concealed carry class. Uh, we're here to give you some exposure to do something that you don't normally do in your everyday life uh, to do it with safety and uh, and have a have a good time. <laughs> I'm about that life. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see how I did here. Oh, yeah. No burglars coming in my household. There's a competitive edge to everything, including those who like to work on their long range game. Usually military installations have these thousand yard ranges and they compete at thousand yards, 600 yards, long distances at rather large targets, but very small bullseye. So they actually count 10 points every time you hit the 10 ring. 10 points with a designated X if you hit the bullseye, which is an X ring. You want to back your eye up until you see a full picture. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations, you just nailed a target at 500 yards. All right. <laughs> at Virginia International Raceway, JB Ricks, Time Warner Cable News. A true American hero who put his life on the line for his country is continuing to live his life on the edge here at home. U.S. Marine Corps Staff Sergeant Liam Dwyer is making quite the name for himself within the Continental Tire Sports Car Challenge. He is currently in first place of the standings halfway through the season, but what makes his success so remarkable is that he's doing this with a prosthetic leg after losing it while in combat four years ago in Afghanistan. There's been no hindrance with the injuries. It's been really adapting myself to the car and learning how to work with those adaptions. It hasn't been a hindrance. Going fast in a car, you're not limited by, if you want to call it, your, your disabilities, is if you want to look at it that way. You're limited by what's up here. I've been very fortunate to why I've been blessed where I got a huge heart and I got a very little brain. I don't mind going out to a racetrack and doing some stupid things, which I've done. I've been involved in a few wrecks, 
But um, it's really a testament to the guys I'm around that give me the confidence to be in the car, to go out there and push it. Staff Sergeant Dwyer and his Mazda Freedom Autosport team have top 10 finishes in all five of their races this year. And even he is a bit shocked at what is turning into a dream season. Oh, I've been absolutely surprised at the success that I've had. I think anybody, regardless of who they are, um, would be impressed with the amount of success that I've had you know, this early on into my racing career. People dream of having this type of season even when they've been racing for years upon end. A driver's and manufacturer's championship for his Mazda Freedom team is what's in his sights right now, and a rookie of the year title would be the icing on the cake. <laughs> Moving forward, it's all about putting the pedal to the metal. I think as with any professional athlete, if you're not striving to get better, you're only doing yourself a disservice and your team a disservice. Every single pro driver that's been doing this for years on end is always trying to find that next thing to make him a little bit quicker so we can have an, have an edge up on the competition. I'm always trying to make myself faster. At Virginia International Raceway, JB Ricks, Time Warner Cable News. On Wednesday, April 13th, the NBA had a night that we'll most likely never see again. The Warriors set the record for most wins in a regular season at 73, and one of the best players of our time had arguably the greatest farewell performance in the history of sports. In honor of Kobe Bryant's 60-point performance, I'd like to share this video blog entitled My Letter to Kobe. Where do I begin? 20 years, two decades of greatness. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was a senior at Ypsilanti High School. Michael Jordan was in his final days with the Bulls. You were throwing up air balls in your first ever taste of playoff basketball. Only a few of us had seen it. Only a few recognized what was to come, and I am so thankful that I was one of them. Who was going to take MJ's mantle? Who was going to be the next Michael Jordan if this generation could be so lucky? I had a speech class that final year of our high school year. Our final project was to give a presentation on a public figure. I wanted my presentation to be on you becoming the next MJ. Your game, your flair, your swag, your self-confidence, your ability, your size, your strength, your touch. I mean, do I even need to go on? You were it to me. You were that guy, the next Michael Jordan. I bragged about it all the time to calling myself a prognosticator. Then Phil Jackson came along. I knew it was a wrap for the entire NBA. Phil, Shaq, and Kobe on the same team? You gotta be kidding me. Now I'm not just a fan, a Kobe fan, I officially became a Lakers fan. You needed championships to not only validate yourself, but to validate me constantly running my mouth on how you were going to be the next MJ. Three championships followed, back to back to back. Then of course, the Shaq versus Kobe feud ensued, followed by Colorado. Everybody was siding with Shaq, of course, but me, that entire situation wasn't any of my business. I just wanted more rings, six to be exact. It was clear the Shaq and Kobe dynasty was coming to an end when I watched my Pistons wipe the floor of us in 2004. I knew one of you had to go. Everybody was screaming, Shaq, Shaq, Shaq. I was hoping the organization went the other direction. If you became a member of the Clippers, Bulls, Spurs, or whoever, I didn't care. I was rocking with you and your team no matter where you ended up. Thank you, Dr. Jerry Buss, for making the right decision and keeping Kobe a Laker. And from there, the Black Mamba was born. Record after record fell. How memorable was that night? You scored 81 points. I didn't get to see one play of that game, but as soon as I heard what was going on, I turned my satellite radio on as soon as I got home. I had to somehow be a part of that historic night. They still hated on you though. They wouldn't even give you an MVP. It was so foul, but your true fans knew what it was. Your true fans were simply known as being a Kobe guy. To us, you were the unanimous MVP year in and year out. Finally, the front office got it together and put some pieces around you. Then came the formal recognition, which was a few years late. Your first and only MVP in 2008. We lost to the Celtics that year in the finals, but I knew you would lead Laker gang back. You had the help you needed combined with your leadership and toughness. There was no denying you getting a fourth ring. The emotion you displayed when the clock struck zero that night in Orlando was a microcosm of the excitement and jubilation I displayed in my brownstone in Brooklyn, New York. It was validation for not only you, but all of your loyal fans. They hated us so much, they hated you even more. But you finally got a ring without Shaq. What were they gonna say now? Then you follow that up with ring number five in an epic seven game series over the Celtics. Game, set, match. Legend officially solidified. 
I've covered maybe a half dozen of your games, interviewed you twice and made sure to shake your hand afterwards both times just to remind you that we are appreciative of everything you've given us. You said in an interview earlier in the week that when it came to your loyal fans, it's as if we grew up together. You're damn right. I've watched you from day one. And here we are 20 years later, both in our 30s. Our prime is in the rearview mirror, but even more greatness lies ahead. You have been more than an inspiration for me throughout my entire career in broadcast journalism, mainly because of your work ethic. And whatever endeavor you chase in this new chapter of life, I know you will be just as great at it the way you displayed that greatness on the court. You, Jerry Rice, Derek Jeter, and Michael Jordan are my Mount Rushmore of sports. I will end this lengthy letter to you with a simple thank you. I will forever be grateful for the entertainment you provided me as a fan over the past 20 years, but most importantly, thank you for proving me right. J.B. Ricks, Time Warner Cable News.